Yeah, Basel YouTube, Six Foot Hacks here. Half for you guys today, showdown live. But before I get into the actual video, if you guys have not yet asked me questions you would like to ask me for my 18K q and I'll leave a link to that video down below. You can click that video and ask some questions on there that you would like me to answer or that you may have left on previous videos that I haven't got around to answering. So yeah, I'll definitely make sure to answer every question that you guys leave me. So if you would like to ask me some, Feel free to go check it out. The video will be up until Wednesday, and then the actual like answer portion will be going up Friday or Saturday, most likely. So that's pretty awesome. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into this live. So I was looking around the Smogon forums, just kind of trying to get ideas for teams that I wanted to make. And this is what I kind of wanted to put together, throw together something really fun uh, based around hazard stacking with Hippowdon and Klefki here. While we don't have a ghost type, it's not always... Um, too common that you're gonna be able to get up uh, every single form of hazard and actually yeah okay so for some reason I thought I had defog on this Latios but we have healing wish which is really awesome to be able to recover back up our Blastoise here or even our choice bandit infernape which bandit ape is actually something I've been kind of wanting to test out in UU for a while now I remember nasty pot ape was a huge threat last gen so really hoping bandit ape puts in a lot of work with the uh, iron fist here get it all shouts out to the people who follow me in the TBU and uh, shouts out to UCL season 2 people for the tortuga here and then we have of course good old hip out on which i don't i don't know just call it Eddie. i don't know but yeah that's kind of a quick run through of the team it does kind of suck that we don't have sludge bomb on amoongus but stun spore is pretty handy and i have been thinking of changing magna rise maybe to foul play just because sub cm raiko looks like it could be a huge huge problem to this team so i have to watch out for that but yeah hopefully this team does put in a lot of work and we can go ahead and uh get this started all right, guys, so we got the first matchup here. Uh, this team actually looks really scary. Uh, Webs potentially is terrifying. So I can I can see him leading off with the Smeargle. I kind of just want to lead with my Infernape, actually. Because I can maybe U-turn out of the Smeargle and then go from there. So he actually ends up leading off with the Whimsicott. I'm hoping he thinks that I'm actually going to be Scarfed. Because I think Scarf Ape is something that's kind of common. Oh yeah, <laughs> if you guys do enjoy the video, uh, make sure to leave a like. So he's going to end up going for the Taunt, probably thinking I would go for the Rocks. Not a bad play on his part, as I will be able to U-turn on out of here. Uh, Clef Key is not too bad in this scenario, because I can spike up once. The problem with that is that he does get a free switch into the Smeargle. Which could be really bad. Um, honestly, he doesn't really have any good switch-ins to Blastoise. Like, look at his Blastoise answers i can live a giga drain for sure unfortunately though, i don't think we knock out whimsicott with any one of our moves i may have to bring in amoongus here as much as i don't want to yeah so i was really positive he wouldn't go straight for an offensive move because like i said i think scarfape is kind of a common set and i am banded so we're able to get off a huge hit i really want to go for the spore here there is a good chance he's just going to go for the taunt though although that is a little unlikely because we could just go for the sludge bomb Maybe doubling out wouldn't be too bad of a play here. I kind of want to pull a double. I almost think he's going to go into Smeargle. But he actually goes for the Endeavor. Okay. Um, That's a little annoying. I really thought he wouldn't want to switch out there. I really, really thought he wouldn't want to switch out. Okay, so that was a bit of a bad play on my part. As he's just going to, I guess, want to sack off this Whimsicott. That's actually not bad. That's not too bad, I think. As he is going to be able to just barely live. He does, unfortunately, get off another Endeavor here. But we waste an extra turn of his Tailwind, which is pretty decent. I almost want a Giga Drain here. I really, really do, but I don't think it's going to be worth it. Because he could just very well live. Yeah, this goes down either way. He's got one final turn of the Tailwind, I'm pretty sure. So if he brings in Smeargle here, he's going to waste his last turn of Tailwind. Which isn't bad. I really thought that he was going to try and pull a double switch. Or... Yeah, I don't know. I guess him sacking off Whimsicott isn't bad either. Like, that makes perfectly enough sense. So... It's not entirely too bad. It's not entirely too bad. Amoongus was just nice to kind of deal with a non-Z-move uh, Kabutops. Medicham could still be kind of a problem. Crocodile is slightly annoying i could see him pursuit trapping here that wouldn't be a bad play at all but if he is locked into pursuit that's fine with me as he actually ends up going for the knockoff that's really fine i don't know if me having sand stream on this wouldn't matter or not he could have the taunt like i could expect him having taunt here because i have seen taunt crocodile before 
as he ends up switching directly to Skabutops. That's not a bad aggressive play on his part, considering that I don't really have a safe switch into this monster. I could see him just wanting to go for the Rapid Spin. Also, maybe just Waterfall right off the bat. I'm gonna Earthquake. Yeah, him Rapid Spinning right away was, was a little obvious. So he is gonna be able to barely live, bruh, come on! Oh, that is actually kind of annoying. Oh, that is a little bit annoying. Um... This thing could actually be kind of a problem now that I look at it. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, I was really hoping Earthquake would have been enough to knock him out there. Although he doesn't have Lefty, so maybe he's had the Focus Sash. I could see him having Focus Sash, potentially. So he's gonna go for the Aqua Tail, doesn't do entirely too much, which is really nice. And at this point, I should be able to just Mega Evolve, chew any hit. And he doesn't really have a safe switch in the Dark Pulse. I can live a Stone Edge as long as he doesn't crit me. Yeah, unfortunately, this Kabutops did put in a bit of work against my team. Uh, I have the Thunder Wave still for the Haunch Crow, which is nice. Crocodile could still be a little bit of a problem, maybe. Maybe, just maybe. Uh, Medicham, depending on the set, could maybe be an issue. I need to get up rocks, man. Like, if I get up rocks, then we break the, the Sash on Smeargle, which makes it a little less annoying. Because that's why I mainly want rocks up at this point, like, outside of that. And I guess getting off chip damage on Haunch Crow isn't too bad either. But even though we are up 6-4... to four, my Blastoise is weakened, Amoongus is weakened, and so is my Hippowdon. So, he's got three easy potential kills depending on what he decides to go in here. I could see Honchkrow coming in just because he gets the Moxie boost. That's not a bad play for him to have done either. I don't want him to just Moxie boost though, so I'm going to switch right into my Klefki. Does a solid, solid chunk of damage to us, unfortunately. This is where spiking may actually really help me out here. I kind of want to spike because I expect him to not want to stay in. I could see him maybe switching. If he does stay in, that's fine. He shouldn't have one move that should Oko us right away, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, oh, that's the easiest live of my life. Easiest live of my life. Oh, I don't have Thunder Wave. Okay, sorry. For some reason, I thought I had Thunder Wave. Uh, this could be a little bit of a problem now that I look at it. All right, so I'm just going to spike up again. I see he's going to go for the Brave Bird. That's fine with me. I just need to get off recoil damage on this Honchkrow, man. That's the main issue right now. It's just... Trying to rack up the damage so I can hopefully put it in range of where my Infernape can knock him out. So that's fine. We're able to live the hit. He is going to get off a bit more damage on us, but that's not entirely too bad because it looks like Banded Ape can win this for sure. So we're just going to slack off again if for some reason he wants to switch or if he tries to go for the Roost, that's fine. As he gets a plus two. Banded Ape does indeed out-prioritize this. We have the Iron Fist. It is neutral. I'm pretty sure it's going to do at least... 40% to this Haunch Crow. There is a chance he may go for Sucker Punch, but I guess we're not going to get to find out. As down it goes, the chip damage for the Crocodile is going to be really nice. We should be able to Oko Smeargle, and it's just Medicham that right now is our next problem. Hmm. Actually, this isn't too bad either. So I should be able to sack off my, my Blastoise here as he goes for the Ice Punch. <laughs> able to just chew the hit. Did zero. Really wish we had a bit more bulk investment because we might be able to live another one. Unfortunately, though, he should be able to outspeed me here. Yeah, he should definitely outspeed me here. Just gonna Hydro Pump as he goes for a power up punch. Luckily, he is not Scarf, so. As much as I want to Flare Blitz. Uh, no, I don't think it's worth Flare Blitzing right now. I could definitely bring in Latias here. Just go for the Draco. This is gonna die. Smeargle should still drop, even though we're at minus one. And then we can win with Infernape. Is this Scarf Crook? If this is Scarf Crookedal, it can maybe still win. Maybe. Just gonna Draco. Yeah, that just dies. <laughs> Down it goes. Down it goes. In comes the Crookedal. Oh, he could actually be Scarfed. Yeah, because he's got Moxie. Hmm. Can I Healing Wish here? Oh, awesome. So he's not Scarf. That's really great. And now we can just close combat. And Bandit and Frene, man, just putting the team on his back. Just pulling out the victory. So that's really great. Awesome first win here. There's no way he should be able to outspeed me, especially because Latios went before him. And I don't think Healing Wish has priority, does it? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Healing Wish doesn't have priority. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does it? No. Because 
I heard, I've heard that Healing Wish has priority at the same time. I've heard that it doesn't, so I don't know. Yeah, okay, so if he was Scarfed, he would have outsped. I don't know, maybe I'm just losing my mind. So, pretty solid first match. Let's go ahead and get another one. Alright, guys, so we got the second matchup here, and this looks like Sticky Web balanced, kind of? Because he's got a pretty solid wall core between Sylveon, Blastoise, and Roserade here. And then offensive threats in Azelf, Darmanitan. Galvantula could still be offensive. This could very well be offensive Roserade, so I gotta watch out for that. Uh, I definitely see him just leading off with the... With the Galvantula, though. I don't know if Amoongus 2 KOs Galvantula, does it? Hold on. I'm pretty sure that I should be able to 2 KO with my Amoongus. I just want to make sure, though. Oh, no. Okay. So it's a 3 KO. Uh, I don't know if Sludge Bomb would be a 2 KO. Would it? Oh, huh, there's a better chance. That's whatever. It's fine. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. But yeah, I can see him leading off with the Galvantula. Kind of want to lead Hippo. Kind of want to lead Hippo. At the same time... Amoongus isn't too bad of a lead. But if he leads Darmanitan, that could be bad. I think Hippo is a decent lead. Oh, as he let off with that. Oh, that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and hard switch right into the Amoongus. Amoongus should be able to deal with Blastoise accordingly. I don't think a Hydro plus Ice Beam should knock me out here. Or Water Pulse plus Ice Beam should knock me out. So I have free liberty to go for Spore here potentially. Would he hard switch right into Roserade? I'm gonna see what his initial switch into this is. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Infernape absolutely destroys him once we weaken Blastoise. So that's really good. As he goes for the Hidden Power Fire, and he does turn out to be offensive. That's, that's really good. That's really good because now I have a choice to either go straight for the Flare Blitz and annihilate this, or I can U turn out. I'd rather U turn. Because I'm still banded, getting off chip damage on Blastoise is going to be really nice because the more chip, the closer it's going to be in range of where Flare Blitz could be a Tua Kyo potentially on a switch in. So I have to be a little bit careful with my Infernape. I can't just blindly switch it in like this like I did in the first game. Because it looks like he's just going to be making the safe plays in the early beginning right now. So his best switch into a Flare Blitz is either Darmanitan or the Blastoise. I don't see him switching into Darmanitan. That would be just a weird play in my opinion. As that did sick. Holy crap, that did 60%. It did so much damage. I think I just get a free kill here. Like, he's either going to switch into Sylveon, or he's going to sack off this Galvantula. Uh, Sylveon is kind of a problem, actually, now that I look at it. Hmm... I'm gonna see what he's gonna do. Okay, so he does decide to sack off Gavantula. I really, really thought he was gonna switch right into Sylveon. So I wanted to pull a double switch. Luckily, though, I'm guessing he thought I would predict that because Sylveon is kind of a, a nuisance to this team now that I look at it. So he can definitely go for a wish here. He really loses nothing in doing so. I'm gonna try and get up a spike. I'm gonna try and get up a spike. Klefki doesn't do entirely too much in this game. Maybe not entirely too much in this game. I'm still going to spike. I really hope he's going to be fearing Thunder Wave. Like, I honestly don't think he should leave an Azelf here. His best switch-ins are definitely the Blastoise or the Roserade. Roserade because it's got Natural Cure, unless he's got Technician, which could make sense. But Blastoise typically deals with Klefki 1v1. And he stays in, goes for Taunt, probably trying to stop me from setting up too much. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that play. I really don't. I don't think he should have done that. What's he going to do? Hmm. He'll probably just stay in here. So I'd rather Dazzling Gleam if he's going to switch in the Blastoise. So we're able to get off a decent little bit of chip damage and break a potential Sash, which is really good. This Azulf is kind of a problem. Just because of how fast it is. So just going to go for the Dark Pulse here. He doesn't have a safe switch in. And he is unfortunately going to go straight for the Explosion. Okay. I don't... I don't know. Like, I guess it makes sense that he's got rocks and explosion, but I thought that maybe it would be a more offensive set as opposed to having explosion. That's not a bad set, though, because he did catch me off guard. He got up his rocks. Uh, we do keep our spike up, though, which is really nice. He could bring in the Blastoise here. He can bring in Roserade. I don't think... There's no way Infernape. 
There's no way Inferno just Oko's um, Mega Blastoise. There's no chance. There's just no chance. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna bring in Infernape. I'm gonna just bring in Infernape. As he brings in the Darmanitan. So Darmanitan is gonna be able to uh, take that nice little chip damage. Mach Punch doesn't do entirely too much. I kind of just want a close combat here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna close combat. I apologize if I can't make out words properly, guys. I should probably get some water. I think that's why I'm messing up a bit here. But he ends up staying in. Just right. What? I don't know how I feel about that play, honestly. I really don't. Hmm. We don't to a Kyo. Sylveon, unfortunately. I'm still just gonna side shot because it's still my best play. It's still my best play for sure. Oh, whoa! Holy crap, that is not offensive. Yes! Okay, good. So this was a... This is offensive. It's not defensive is what I meant. But that would make sense as to why he didn't switch Sylveon into my Latios. In comes the Blastoise. Oh, this thing is a problem. We can live one Ice Beam. Hold on. I want to see how much damage we can do to this. Because this is still winnable. We can still win this. Yeah. This is still winnable. Let's see. Mega Blastoise. Draco does not knock it out. Psyshock plus Draco does knock it out. So I'm going to go for that. Going to go for that. As he's going to end up finishing me off. That's fine. Hmm. Do I just want to HP fire here? Honestly. I could. Giga Drain isn't a bad play either. I could see him switching into Roserade. Yeah, I should have HP fired. Should have HP fired there. That was a bad play on my part. It's fine. We can still live any hit from this Roserade. Unless that happens. Well, kind of sucks. Cause I think I just lost now. Yeah, there's, there's, bro, come on. <laughs> that sucks because I would have been able to get off the chip damage on this, uh, on this thing. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change this up to Thunder Wave. I don't, I don't like Magnet Rise. It's not really coming in too handy right now. Yeah, there's just no way. <sighs> Man. It's fine. It's fine. I definitely could have played better. I definitely could have played this better. So it's only going to be a 1-0 loss. I did notice I made some mistakes. I jumped the gun on some plays. But it's fine. You have to learn from your mistakes. A 1-0 loss isn't too bad. Let's go get another one and hopefully we can pull out a victory on that one. And here we go. Time to flex. I'm absolutely terrified of what this man's team has to show. So... Volcanion is absolutely terrifying. Like I said, Raikou is kind of a problem to this team, so I gotta watch out for that. What's he gonna lead with? I'm gonna lead Infernape, honestly. Yeah, because it looks like Infernape pairs up really well against whatever he wants to lead. If he leads Raikou, he should expect me to be Scarfed, as he ends up leading off with the Volcanion. We don't... Uh... Oko Volcanion with Infernape. If I was, like, Choice Banded Stone Edge, that would probably Oko. Let me see. Oh no, it comes close to Oko. I'm just gonna go for U-turn. Get off some nice chip damage. Nice little chip. Let me make sure he's not like a bulky spread. Okay, so he's gotta be running HP investment. Could it be Assault Vested maybe? He's either gonna go for a water move. I don't think he's gonna go straight for the fire move, but I don't feel comfortable switching into the Amoongus. Sludge Bomb isn't a bad play for him to make either. Seam Eruption is a good middle ground play. That still looks like it specs damage. Holy crap, that did a lot. That's gotta be that's gotta be like modest specs. Yeah, he got a he got a low damage roll if that's modest specs. 
And if he's timid specs, he got a high damage roll. And so... He's gonna switch out here. Probably ride into Clefable. I can Roost. Uh, doubling wouldn't be bad either. I'm gonna double. Yeah, I'm gonna pull a double here. As he brings in the Scizor. That's fine, because we can find out if this is offensive or not. So I'm gonna go straight for the Spore. If this is uh, SD, that is a little scary. But shouldn't be able to beat me this early on. Sporing here is a pretty decent play. I find out if he's banded or not. And what his switch in is. So he's going to switch right into Raikou. That's excellent because we're able to put this to sleep. That's really, really good. Uh, I could see him maybe doubling into the Volcanion. That would be a little bit annoying. I could make an aggressive switch into my Blastoise here. I really want a Stun Spore, man. I really, really want a Stun Spore. Yes! Yes! And we hit! Awesome! Awesome! That's excellent. That's excellent. And then he crits me, bro. Come on. I made a good play there, and then he just he just crits me on the switch in. Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna spike. Get up a little spike, and he crits me twice, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Just that's just a little annoying. It's fine though. It would have been really nice to have Klefki though. As he's going to be able to just barely live. What does he go for? I don't know what he goes for. He didn't get paralyzed once. I made the correct play. And then I got rewarded by getting crit two times in a row. And him not getting fully paralyzed. Not once. So that's pretty nice. It's always great. I have to Dark Pulse this Mew. I need to pressure this Mew. If he's going to go for the Defog, that's fine. Because eventually, Dark Pulse is going to flinch him. If not, I'm going to knock him out here. So he's going to switch right into the Clefable. This could be Combine Clefable. That is going to be a little bit of a nuisance. I don't think... I have seen a lot of Spadef bulky Clefables lately made to take on... Mega Blastoise, so I'm not sure how much we're going to be able to do to this with Hydro Pump. How much did Dark Pulse do? 21%. Okay, so he's not running that much Spadef Bulk. I'm going to Hydro Pump. Oh, that's a clean 2 KO. Yeah, this should still 2 KO as long as I don't miss here. Oh, no, that is payback, man. I don't care if that crit mattered. That is justified. That is perfectly justified for him haxing down my Clefable and not getting paralyzed once. Not even once. So just going to get a Brox here. Because if he stays in, he risks me going for Earthquake. Or, yeah, this was a good play on his part to do too. Because me getting a Brox is very, very obvious at this point in the game. Obviously, I want to get a Brox here just to be able to pressure him. Do I need my Blastoise? Because Hippowdon... No. As long as Raikou's sleeping, I guess it's not too big of an issue. He's burned one turn of sleep, I'm pretty sure. Would he Steam Eruption here? He's Spexed, so if he Steam Eruptions here, he knocks me out. That gave me a switch into my Latias. Amoongus as well is in a bad switch in here. I think Blastoise is probably my better switch in because I get off chip damage. I pressure everything. Yeah, so Dark Pulse is probably my better play here. No reason not to go for it. I can take one Steam Eruption. And there's a chance I'm faster than him because my U-turn didn't do the 13% if he wasn't running HP Investment. So he's got to be running HP Investment. Because my U-turn did 11%. Yeah, so we're able to outspeed him. As we do chew one hit and he burns me. <sighs> Never lucky, dude. Never lucky. Okay. Latios can Psy Shock. But then Infernape. No, Scizor just SDs and wins, I think. 
Amoongus just lets him go into the Mew for free and defog, basically. Ah, uh, dude, that burn sucks, because I would have been able to get another KO with Blastoise here. I have to close combat with Ape. I have to. Like, there's no other play I make. Ah, oh, that's just really annoying. That's really annoying, because he can win this. He can definitely win this. U-turn doesn't do anywhere near enough to knock out Volcanion. That burn was stupidly lucky on his part, too. The two crits on, Clef on Klefki were lucky enough. And then just... Oh, okay. In comes the Infernape. I mean the Raikou. Please wake up. Yes! Thank you! Okay, good. Down goes the Raikou. Down goes the Raikou. In comes the Mew. Do I do 27%? I am Choice Bandit, Iron Fist, and Fernape. Come on. Come on now. No! Ugh. Wait, how much did Dark Pulse do earlier? Hold on. Because I'm pretty sure I hit this thing with Dark Pulse. Mew lost 54% health. Okay, hold up. If you guys think these calcs aren't useful, like, they're very needed, guys. Like, they're very, very handy right now. Okay, so he's definitely got to have a lot of spadef bulk if my Blastoise Dark Pulse only did 54%. Because if he Psychic's here, I win. If he goes for a Soft Bold, then I can switch out and probably still win. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. Oh, it just died! It just went down! Yes! Awesome! See, guys, that is why you have to check your damage calcs. Because if I hadn't had run the calc there, I would have been like, I'm going to switch out. And if I had switched out, he probably would have gone for soft bold. Which would have made things a little bit more difficult. Just a little bit. Not too much, though. Not too much. So, in comes the scissor. I have the hidden power of fire. Yeah, I have the hidden power of fire. He's not going to be able to knock me out. Even if he does uh, knock me out here, I can then just bring in Infernape and it's pretty much a good game. So yeah, solid, solid match. Alright guys, so we're about to reach uh, 30 minutes or so and I think I'm going to cut the live here. Three pretty solid battles. Still really think I could have won that second game. I did kind of misplay a little bit. But hey, uh, that is Pokemon. So yeah, Mega Blastoise, Absolute Dawn. Bandit Infernape, though. I really think Bandit Infernape uh, was definitely the MVP in this battle. Because this thing just put in so much work, man. Really, really wants to use his more in the future. I think people expect Scar for, like, setup. And then just Bandit Ape comes in and just nukes things. We have uh, Healing Wish Latias here, which obviously did come in handy, which is really nice. Maybe Hidden Power Fire over Healing Wish could also be kind of an option, but it's just really nice to have Healing Wish. Then HP Fire, Amoongus definitely would have come in handy. Sludge Bomb is still a good option. I think Foul Play is also really nice, just because it does break a sub combine Raikou substitute, so that could be something to be considered. And I really think Thunder Wave over Magnarize would have been a lot better in Game 2, because if we had Thunder Wave, then I don't think uh, things would have maybe gone out gone too out of hand but hey that is pokemon and uh it's just how things go so yeah guys hopefully y'all did enjoy the video make sure to hammer on that like button down below and if you would like to use this team i'll leave a paste link uh to it uh paste bin link to it down below so yeah gonna go get that water because i can't make proper sentences <laughs> later guys Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from crying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain, tears or hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real